Hey everyone, this is Jerry with San Pedro Mastery. I received quite a few questions by email on how to prepare growing trays and sow cactus seeds. So I thought I would film myself doing one tray so that you can see the entire process. This works for San Pedro, for peyote and in fact for most species of cacti. I will be sowing the seeds in this tray. First, let's disinfect it with some alcohol. This tray is made by garland and does not come with any holes in it, so I had to drill some, just like I showed you in my video about trays. There were cactus seedlings growing in this tray before, so I had to clean it thoroughly beforehand. First, I brushed it with water and dishwashing liquid, then I wiped it with some disinfectant. I use one called Sanitol, it comes in sprays, but you could also use bleach diluted with water. One part bleach, to 9 parts water. The alcohol here is probably overkill, but you want to make sure that any pathogens, fungus or bugs that could be there from the previous grow are gone. When you clean the tray, make sure you get all the dirt out of the angles as well as the draining holes. You can use a toothbrush for that. Now that the tray is super clean, we can add the soil to it. In this case, the soil has been sterilized, which is what I recommend if you want to leave the tray sealed in transparent film for a few months. That's definitely worth doing if you're doing a large tray like this one, as you won't need to water it for months. I personally sterilize the soil in a pressure cooker, but you can also sterilize it in a microwave oven. Both procedures I explain in my video, sterilizing soil for cactus seed starting. The soil mix I use here is one I made myself, using about two parts regular potting soil, two parts local soil, and one part earthworm castings. So that's 5 parts so far, and afterwards I will add another 5 parts per light. 10 parts in total. You can pretty much use the soil mix you want as long as half of it is perlite. Of course, you could replace the perlite by coarse sand and gravel, but that weighs a lot, which means a much heavier tray and a soil that is more dense, which is not ideal for root development. Now, let me go through the ingredients of my homemade mix. First off, the potting soil. I use typical regular potting soil that you can find in most garden stores, which is mainly made of peat. Look at the ingredients. Your best bet would be peat only, but they do like to add extra stuff. Many of them will have bark. Bark is not wanted, but this is not a big issue as you can sieve it out, just like I showed you in my video on sterilizing the soil. Even if it does not mention bark as an ingredient, you should sieve the soil anyway to remove small pieces of wood. Soil manufacturers do like to add fertilizer as well. You can use that, it's fine. Also, if you can get a soil without fertilizer, it's better. Sometimes you can find commercial soils specifically made for seedlings, which do not include fertilizer and typically include ingredients that retain water, such as vermiculite or cococoyo. These are not really good for adult cacti, but they won't hurt seedlings. However, you really don't need anything to retain humidity. Since you're going to seal the tray with film, the soil is going to remain humid anyway. If you want to know what I personally do, I just get a regular peat-based soil in a very large bag. I don't fall for the marketing and the promises of fancy commercial soil mixes. The second ingredient of my homemade mix is local soil. If like me you live somewhere where cacti grow in the wild, then you can use some soil from your garden. Otherwise you can skip this and replace it by the same quantity of regular potting soil. The local soil I use is really good. It has a lot of sand in it, and it probably has some clay in it which ties the soil together, preventing the seedlings from falling over. However, I would not want to use the local soil by itself, because it weighs a lot, it hardens and compacts too much, and it has less nutrients. The third ingredient of my soil is earthworm castings, which is an organic form of fertilizer. It does lose some of its properties when you sterilize it, but not all of them. All these three ingredients are sterilized together. Then I add the same volume in perlite, which is straight out of the bag without sterilizing. It is not necessary to sterilize it as long as you've kept the bag closed and in a clean environment. I then add some water to the perlite and I mix it with the soil. Some people wear a dust mask when handling perlite. I personally don't, 
but I try not to create too much dust when handling it. Once the perlite is wet, then there is no more dust in the air. I keep mixing the soil until it's all evenly mixed. If you squeeze hard the soil in your hands, there should be no more than one or two drops of water coming out. You will probably need to add more water. Water does not have to be sterilized, you can pour it straight out of a bottle of drinking mineral water. You will need to add water until the humidity of the soil is just right. This is a crucial point, because if it's not wet enough, or if on the contrary it's too wet, then the seeds may not germinate. You have to find the sweet spot. For that reason, it's a good idea to add water by small increments, as you cannot remove excess water. Once the right amount of humidity is achieved, I flatten the soil with my hands. It is important to make a flat, even surface so that there are no higher bumps where the seedlings could come in contact with the transparent film. Now is the moment to sow the seeds. I wash my hands and dry them quickly, leaving a small amount of humidity on them so that the seeds stick to my fingers. I will be sowing 1,500 seeds in there, which seems about right for the size of this tray. I have a precision scale that weighs milligrams, so I did not have to count these seeds manually. With my fingers still humid, the seeds stick to them, which allows me to sow them little by little. You want to avoid having the seeds all grouped together in bunches, with some empty spaces in between. I avoid that by varying the way I apply them. First, I sprinkle the whole tray in horizontal lines. Afterwards, I switch to vertical lines, followed by some diagonal lines, and at the end, I will sprinkle the rest of the seeds randomly until they are all gone. If you have not done that already, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. This will ensure you get informed of my future tutorial videos on how to grow the San Pedro and peyote. Also, if this video is being helpful to you, make sure you press the like button as this really helps my channel. Likewise, if you have any questions or suggestions on how I prepare the trays and sow the seeds, please let me know in the comment section below. This is my method, I'm sure there are other ways of doing it, and I'd be curious to hear them. With a clean sheet of paper towel, I get the last seeds off. Now I spray some water on top of the seeds to make sure the seeds are not dry. I use a small bottle of drinking mineral water. Only about a third or a quarter of the bottle is enough to wet the surface. The nozzle comes from a spray bottle. I have washed the nozzle and tube previously. And I've also made it spray some hydrogen peroxide at the typical 3% concentration in order to sterilize it. Of course, the hydrogen peroxide was beforehand, just to disinfect the nozzle, and I sprayed it in the sink. Do not spray hydrogen peroxide on the seeds. What I am spraying on them is just pure mineral water. Next, I'm going to clean the table, and right after, I will show you how I wrap the tray in film. Done. The table is clean. Now I can wrap the trays in transparent film. I start lengthwise. You have to stretch the wrap a bit so that it won't sag and touch the soil. And of course, you have to cover the holes at the bottom. These holes only will become functional when you remove the film in a few months. Then I do a second layer widthwise. Two layers are needed so that the humidity does not escape. Now what you have to do is to immediately place the tray in the light with the correct temperature. This can be achieved indoors as well as outdoors, and you will find the steps explained in some of my other videos, such as growing the San Pedro and Peyote indoors, growing the San Pedro and Peyote outdoors, winter setup, or growing the San Pedro and Peyote under fluorescent lights. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new to the channel and thinking about buying seeds, make sure you also check my video why most St. Pedro seeds are a rip-off. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more videos.